What's the word, y'all? Wow. Kenny doing a video in the daytime? For sure. A lot of the OGs of this channel know it wasn't always just a recap. It was just whenever I felt like talking about basketball. And today I feel like talking about the trade deadline and trade rumors because that is the only thing on my mind in the NBA world. People have been asking where the, where the recaps have been. And honestly, um, I haven't been super invested in the NBA to, to put out a full-length video of me talking about all the games because why would I watch Pacers versus Miami Heat when I can watch Loyola Chicago beat up on Illinois? You know what I'm saying? So I have been prioritizing college basketball at the moment over the NBA because those games are win or go home. And right now, it doesn't feel like that in the NBA. Of course, every game matters when it comes to seating and stands and things like that. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really hold that much weight. Especially with the trade deadline being on Thursday, the teams that I'm watching right now are not the final version of the teams. And I, I kind of want to use today's video to talk about the trade deadline and, and the things that are on my mind related to those. Um, I listen to a lot of NBA podcasts, and, and one that I listened to recently, I forget if Woj was on someone else's or this was Woj's show. He was basically saying that he expects to see like 15, 16, 17 trades go down this trade deadline. And when I heard him say that, I'm like, really? Like, like really? It, it didn't feel like. Le ramping up into this week it didn't feel like it would be that active of a trade deadline and and then now that I'm thinking about it now that's completely capped it's probably going to be a super active trade deadline but not one that's going to get you a superstar player getting traded because we got that earlier in the season with the James Harden trade so today yesterday the rumors have been all over the place and today I want to kind of tackle some of those rumors and talk about some teams that I think should be making some trades this week. Um, Woj also said that he doesn't expect to see many trades happening on Monday and Tuesday because everybody's invested in the tournament. So expect a lot of buzzer beater trades coming out on Thursday, which is very interesting because I have a video shoot for called game with the player that name has been in rumors. So I feel like he's going to have to cancel because he might get traded on Thursday. I don't know. So let's start off with the, with the player that is on my mind the most, and that is Victor Oladipo. Because, um, well, Victor Oladipo's had a, a weird... 12 months or whatever you want to call it. He got offered the contract by the Indiana Pacers. He says no. They trade him away a part of the, the Karis LeVert trade to the Houston Rockets, and the Houston Rockets get him because they want him more than Karis LeVert, and now he's basically not signing an extension. He just want to play for somebody that, that wants him, even though both of the teams he just previously played for, uh, played for wanted him. But we know he is going to be traded. If he is not traded this at the trade deadline, I'd be super, super surprised. And it feels like the Houston Rockets are are doing the James Harden trade to basically get nothing but draft picks if they don't flip Victor Oladipo for something else. But then we have to think about the value of Victor Oladipo because, of course, he's still a quality NBA player. But he got offered some big-time money from the Houston Rockets. He got offered some big-time money from the Indiana Pacers, and he was like, no. Now, was that because he thinks he's more valuable than that as far as dollars go? Possibly. Or he just has his mindset on one. One specific team or a couple teams is not this. So they're looking for a first, a young, talented player. And what you're going to see as a theme in today's video is there are a lot of teams out there that believe that their players are way more valuable than what they are. A team is not giving you a young, quality player and a first for a guy that's probably not going to resign. But there's one team. There's one team that I think he will fit perfectly on, and that is the New York Knicks. I feel like I, I have built – I'm not a guy that's going to go into the trade machine and try to make trades. I do that on 2K. I have no idea of value of players in real life. It's so hard because a guy that I would pay a lot for probably not getting traded for a lot. So the trade for Victor Lodipo – it's very, very simple for the New York Knicks. It makes sense, too, because the Knicks, as good as they are, they're, they're trying to make that push to continue to be a playoff team and give the New York Knicks fans something to root for at the end of the day by making the playoffs. They're a team that also struggles to score the ball at times. There have been times recently where they score like 18 points in the fourth quarter. That is unacceptable. Victor Lodipo is a two-way player that can score the ball still, and I think it wouldn't be that crazy to be able to convince Victor Lodipo to stay in the, in the mecca. You know what I'm saying? I feel like once, once players are there, they want to stay there because that's how nice of a city it is. That's how nice Madison Square Garden is. So here's the trade I, I put together. Um, Houston Rockets fans may not like this, but again, you're trading away a one-year player. Not even it, This is a half-a-season rental, probably. Victor Oladipo for one of the poor Zingas picks from the Dallas Mavericks, Kevin Knox, and Austin Rivers. Trey Machine says it works, and it gives the Houston Rockets that young player and Kevin Knox because I, I wouldn't give up on Kevin Knox just yet. He can shoot the ball, you know what I'm saying? And he just needs a lot of PT probably, some some experience, and Tom Thibodeau is not giving anybody experience. He wants to win, win, win. So you get the young, talented player potentially. You get the first-round pick of one of the picks in the Porzingis trade, and then Austin Rivers is there to make the money match up because the, the New York Knicks don't have a ton of money on the book, so they can take in a contract like Victor Lodipo. And now you have another two-way wing to put on the court with R.J. Barrett. You 
you have your your point guard and Alfred Payton, Derrick Rose slash Emmanuel quickly playing some on guard and off guard. And now your team looks like not just a playoff team, but a decent playoff team that maybe teams don't really want to see in the first round. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the Victor Depot trade for me. Uh, move on to the next team that is really out there wild when it comes to their trade value players. That is the Orlando Magic. Aaron Gordon walked into the office, I guess, today and was like, I requested a trade, even though his name has been in trade rumors for about two months now. But he said it first. He requested a trade, and he will probably get moved. All the rumors that I see, people are saying that they're 75 80% sure that Aaron Gordon is going to be on a different team come Thursday, which is beautiful because I, I'm I'm still on Aaron Gordon Mountain, bro. I do believe that Aaron Gordon can be a way better player than what he has showcased in Orlando. Orlando has his history, at least recently, where they will draft a guy and don't put the right pieces around him for him him to succeed at the end of the day Aaron Gordon is most likely a four slash small ball five but guess what they ran him at small four for a chunk of his career they drafted Jonathan Isaac who is also a four but these are two of your top players so you got to play him on the court at the same time so now either Jonathan Isaac is out of position or Aaron Gordon is out of position and you can't play Aaron Gordon at the small ball five because Vucevic is their best player and he's always in the court so I do believe that Aaron Gordon going to a team that allows him to, to thrive and, and he showcased that playmaking skills because there was earlier uh, either earlier this season or last season and they allowed him to play like point forward, and he's playing very, very well. There's still a lot in the tank for Aaron Gordon, but the asking price for him is ridiculous. The asking price for him, for Evan Fournier, for Terrence Ross, these are all, all guys that might get traded from the Orlando Magic. They're looking for young players, plus picks, plus all of this. And it's kind of insane. Um, I don't know where Aaron Gordon ends up. I feel like there's a lot of teams out there that can convince themselves to make a trade for Aaron Gordon, and, and he will be moved, but I just don't know where that is. The next team I want to talk about was the... The Sacramento Kings, right? Let me let because I, I don't really know what the Sacramento Kings are doing. Let me explain to you all the rumors slash things that have come out about the Sacramento Kings over the past couple weeks. Harrison Barnes was linked to the Boston Celtics and a couple other teams. Then they they shut that down. He's basically untouchable. Okay. They shut down any trade offer that has to do with Buddy Hill. He's basically untouchable. But then they throw the <laughs> then they throw in Marvin Bagley in trade room. It's like, yeah, we not we not in love. We picked him over Luka Doncic, but you can probably pry him away from our team. They're in this spot. And, oh, Rashawn Holmes is also in trade talks right now. So are you selling? Are you keeping? Are you buying? Like, what is the direction for this team? I feel like we all believe. That this team is super young, right? They have a super young team. But in reality, they, they really don't have that young of a team. De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Marvin Bagley, these are young players. Buddy Hield is not as young as me and you think he is. You know what I'm saying? Rashawn Holmes is not as young as me and you think he is. Harrison Barnes is actually younger than I thought. I thought he was in his 30s, but... um. I think he's like 27, you know what I'm saying? So they have a, a veteran team that still can't win games. So should they be selling and hitting that reset again by building around De'Aaron Fox and 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 Tyrese Halliburton as their backcourt? Probably, but it'd be, it'd be hard to convince the fans after 25 years of, of missing the playoffs, it feels like, that we're going to hit the reset again, again. And it's hard to look at what Marvin Bagley's done. And Marvin Bagley is very far from a bad player. I don't I don't want you to, to miss my words here. He's very far from a bad player. But if you're trading Marvin Bagley now, it's you're not getting a lot in return. You just aren't. So you're going to trade him now but keep Harrison Barnes and Buddy Heald but trade Rashawn Holmes? I don't understand what the Kings are doing. I don't think they understand what they are doing. They still have Luke Walton as the coach, so that tells you everything you need to know. The Toronto Raptors. I, mean, I have a lot of things on this list right here, so this is probably going to be a longer video. But So buckle in, ladies and gentlemen. The Toronto Raptors, in the last video that we created, I, I told you that the Toronto Raptors are one of those teams that are at a crossroad. What do they do with Cal Lowry? Um, he said he wants to retire as a Toronto Raptor, which he probably will, but it might be on a one-day contract. He said himself um, that the trade deadline is his birthday, so he don't care what happened because he's going to be celebrating his birthday. But I could definitely see both routes where you keep Cal Lowry, which is what it, it came out that they are not looking to trade Cal Lowry. But it might be a hit his best interest because I don't know if you really enjoy the the Philadelphia 76 or package or you really like the the Miami Heat package but as far as like allowing him to go out there and try to win another championship Toronto is just not the place for that in his older age but again he's such a big part of the team he's such a big part of the culture he'll mess around and have a statue built outside in Toronto like that's how big of a player he has been for this organization so you kind of want to do right by him, by maybe trading him, but you also have this attachment to the player, which I completely understand. So even if Kyle Lowry's not traded, executives have also said that they're 80% sure that the Norman Powell would get traded. 
And when I when I made the video a few days ago, that wasn't really on my radar, but it makes sense. I mean, he's on the last year of his deal. He has a player option worth like 11 million. He has outperformed that contract 100 percent. So he will hit free agency. He's going to get paid. So maybe you cash in on him now while his trade value is an all time high. He's been linked to teams like um, I've seen the Dallas Mavericks. I've seen the Atlanta Hawks. But if I'm trying to make a trade, I don't know what the trade package is for a Norman Powell center trade going somewhere else what do the Toronto Raptors really look for right and I I guess that is a big man play because Chris Boucher is really good but he doesn't really d defend the bigs like you want him to he's a very thin frame guy and he fouls a lot so maybe it is a package around getting a, a center that they can build with but when you look at the teams that he's linked to they don't have that you're not trading for Willie Cauley Stein <laughs> you're not trading for Bruno Fernando so I don't know, but people believe he's 80% 80% sure that he will get dealt. And this is why I really love the trade deadline period because even when you see that number, 80% chance, you don't really know where it's, it's going to be. It could be a team out of left field that, that hasn't been linked to him just yet. Pulls the trigger to make a trade for him. I can see New York trying to put together a trade for him. Yeah. Yeah, depending on depending on how New York really values Mitchell Robinson, you talk about a young center for for a team to grow with. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just me thinking off the top of my head. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the Atlanta Hawks next because they have made Bogdanovich available in trades already. They just signed him to that big old contract, um, like eighteen million per year, and I think he has like a fifteen percent trade kicker too, which. It's kind of it's kind of iffy. Um, he's been on and off the season. He missed a lot of time with the injury, and and recently with the team being very good, he's been stepping it up. And that's what makes the Atlanta Hawks such an interesting team right now because they have got hot right before the trade deadline. John Collins had been in trade rumors. They said that Cam Reddish is available, Bogdanovich is available, but like. If your team is looking this solid, and I understand their strength of schedule over the past week and a half where they're on this eight-game win streak has been trash. LeBron messed up his ankle, which is crazy, in a game where, where we were trying to see how good the Atlanta Hawks really are. He messed up his ankle, so they get a win there too. Um, it's, it's weird to see these trade rumors around this team because they are playing so well. I can't imagine them making a big-time trade when they're looking good under Nate McMillan with this team. And they say you pay Gallinari, you pay Bogdanovich, um, you, you made some other other investments around it. So I understand trying to trade John Collins before you have to pay him a max contract. But it seems like everything that I've read through the rumor mill is that the, the trade packages that they're getting offered are trash. So just, you know what I'm saying, just keep them. Cam Reddish is a player, if I am a team on a re if I am the Detroit Pistons, if I am the Cleveland Cavaliers, am I any of these teams that are really in a rebuild? I will take a stab at Cam Reddish. Because we knew that when they drafted DeAndre Hunter and, and Cam Reddish together, one of them probably wasn't going to pan out on their team because they play the same position. And DeAndre Hunter is the guy. He's been really, really good. So Cam Reddish in the trade package, I will, I will take that shot. Because I do believe there's a lot of potential in Cam Reddish. The Chicago Bulls are an interesting team to me. Not just because they are my favorite team, but we have so many young players that could be valuable on the market. Um, we have to make a decision. Are we making a playoff? push or are we trying to take a step back and take a look at the lottery because I could see both both paths man and I wouldn't be mad at whatever decision we make but if the boys do not make a trade at the trade deadline I would be hurt to my heart I'm not I'm not telling you which players should be traded but the team right now is just not orchestrated for any of those two things it's not it's not bad enough that we can hit the lottery and potentially hit a top five pick it's not good enough to to make the the playoffs unless you count the 10 seed as really the playoffs so they have to make a decision and with Laurie marketing being a restricted free agent and him playing very very good some teams are going to convince themselves to pay him there's a lot of money on the market right now and restricted free agency is going to be insane some team is giving Laurie marketing 20 million dollars this offseason so we have to make a decision is he worth that investment or do we trade him away right now while he's at an all-time high Boston Celtics 100% gonna make a trade and if they don't get Danny Ainge ass out of that front office because you have a 17 million dollar trade exception that goes away if you don't use it the biggest in NBA history and they're always linked to these players they, they called about Jeremy Grant they called about Aaron Gordon they called about Harrison Barnes some some deal has to be done for them because as we've talked about they're a piece away two pieces away I don't really know they have to make a decision and 17 million dollars uh, Evan Fournier also has been a player that has been linked to them they have a, a decent amount of younger players that I think teams can convince themselves are worth um, taking an investment on so they better if oh my God Celtics fans I would be in your corner if y'all didn't make a trade this off or this this trade that line whew, the Clippers are a piece away. And they've been calling about everybody. They've been linked to, to really good players. How? What the hell are you offering me for John Collins? What are you offering me for my point guard? Because that's what you really need. What do you What do you have? You can't trade me Zubats, who's probably your most valuable asset because he's young and he's good. Because if you trade him away, you just got Serge and no other big. You, you kept putting Cabin Jelly in a seven-game series? Probably not. You don't have anything of value to me. You gave up every first-round pick in your franchise history to get Paul George. 
So they've been linked here, linked there, linked. How? How are you going to make? If they pulled off a, a dramatic trade to get significantly better, I'm giving all the praise to, is it Jerry West? I, I don't even remember who's running that team. He deserves it. Who, If they could pull off a trade, he deserves it. But they are a piece away from being like, Look that to me, because obviously the two stars, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, are amazing, but the rest of the roster is kind of if, iffy to me. Um, so I, I don't really know. Do you, are you trading Luke Kennard? You just extended him. You just, I don't know. Grizzlies have too much talent. They have too many players that should be in a rotation that may not get the minutes that they deserve. So I don't know if that means you package two of those players together and you try to get a better player or you sell them and get back picks because they could go in either direction too because they're they're young enough to to be able to hit the lottery and be fine. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and if you trade two of those pieces away and you get back draft picks, if you trade the right pieces, you're still a good enough team because you have player 12 on a roster that's good enough. John Conchar can play rotational minutes. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know if they make a trade. It, they've already been talking about Gorgie Zhang trying to get rid of him or buying him out. Um, buyout market is going to be something interesting, too, for a team like the Lakers, who's next on my list, because they don't really have much unless you're trading uh, Hall um Talon, Horton, Tucker, which I doubt they're going to do, especially with LeBron being injured. I doubt they make any big decisions, but the the buyout market will be solid for them. Um, the Le, LaMelo got injured. Lonzo is in trade talks. I would love to see Lonzo on the Bulls jersey, but I don't see why the Pelicans would trade him now, especially since he's playing the best basketball of his life right now, and he actually does fit with their star players. I've never really understood it, you know, when his name threw in the, in the rumors about a month or so ago, because he does fit so well with Zion, in, in my personal opinion, when I'm watching him play. Um, but I don't really know. Spencer Dinwiddie is another trade piece on the market. The Bulls have been linked to him. I know I keep mentioning the Bulls, but it's a, I, I'm all in the Bulls rumor mill because it's my team. Um, and Spencer Dinwiddie is such a good player, but obviously he's injured for this season. He has a player option this offseason, which he's probably going to decline because everybody knows that Spencer Dinwiddie's good. He averaged 20 points per game last season. But this is another trade piece for the Brooklyn Nets to just get better. Um, I'm not saying the team has given up a lot for, for getting Spencer Dinwiddie, who's also injured. Um, but they're going to get another rotational piece if they trade him away, which I think they will trade him away. Um, next we have no DeMar DeRozan rumors. That was my list. I haven't heard a single thing about DeMar DeRozan, Al Horford, um, LaMarcus had the thing. I don't know if they're going to end up buying him out, but no rumors around him. But those are all the things that are on my mind for the trade deadline. I feel like I'm missing a chunk of it, but we're already at 17 minutes, so we'll leave it at that. Let me know what you would like to see your favorite team do at the deadline. Buy, sell, what pieces would you be targeting? Um, because hopefully things get get ramped up. And as trades start to roll in, of course, I'll be here um, reacting to them and letting you know what I think about them. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, call game.